<laughs> well, I don't have any children <coughs> that I know of. <laughs> we can say that. I could have sold my eggs back in the day. Everybody wanted them, but I was I heard it was pain. But even though <laughs> I haven't had any children of my own, I feel like I have written the all-time mother-daughter bonding song called Sometimes Mother Really Does Know Best. And I found the best way to sing it is to put an actual real mother's name with a real teenage daughter's name. Does any mother here have a teenage daughter at home? Or a little one at home? Oh, oh. How old are you? Eleven. And what's your name? Liam. Liam. And what is your name? I've never done it. You know, I'm trying to remember. Like, a, is it going to work if I put a mother and a son in it? Well, let's see what happens. Here we go. Sometimes mother really does know best. Starring Ryoko and Liam. Liam looked in Ryoko's eyes and pleaded, please say yes. You never criticize my friends, my hair, or how I dress. A tiny little eyebrow piercing on me would look sublime. Ryoko thought about it for quite a long, long time. Hmm, Liam with an eyebrow piercing. Mm -hmm. That's a permanent reminder of a temporary fad. When you're old and gray, my dear, you'll go back and be glad that your mother had the foresight to turn down your request. Sometimes mama really does know best. Just a tiny tattoo mother dancing on my skin. All the other kids have one and I want to fit in. A delicate little butterfly mother right here on my wrist. Ryoko thought about it, then she said this, hmm, Liam with a tattoo. That's a permanent reminder of a temporary feeling. Think Angelina and Betty Bob before you hit the ceiling. You think a tattoo on your teenage skin will make you look unique, but when you're older you look like a circus freak. Ryoko and Liam barely spoke for the next year, except for the occasional <laughs> and Sonati sneer. Whatever. <laughs> Looked like there was nothing that could mend this sorry raft. Till Liam overheard Ryoko on the telephone discuss getting a facelift. <laughs> oh, oh, a facelift, mommy. That's a permanent reminder of a temporary fear. Only the lucky ones grow older every year. And I don't think you look like that bad for a crazy bitch your age. <gasps> Ryoko sat there in a smoldering rain. You know, there's two ways the song could go. It could have a very beautiful, wholesome ending where Ryoko and Liam learn lessons of self-acceptance, go on and lead happy and productive lives. Or they could go to the dark side. You're going to vote by your applause how you would like the song to end. So who here at Catherine's beautiful house, by your applause, would like Ryoko and Liam to have the wholesome ending? <laughs> who wants Liam and Ryoko to go to the dark side? Tug me at least now, I know how you feel. If you let me get my face lift, you can get that tattoo now. And yes, I'll even let you pierce. Both of the procedures done on the same day. If only they don't have any price they have to pay. Real though, you got your face lift done by Dr. Frankenstein. You came out looking like a combination monkey and drag queen. And Liam, your tattoo went just fine, but not your eyebrow ring. You contracted an infection, too gross for me to sing. And both of them died disgusting, painful, stinking deaths. Look at her, she's so <laughs> I didn't want her to die, you made me do this. Bother this to say, with their dying breath. Thank you.
And at the reading of their will, they left one last bequest. A pillow upon which was embroidered. Sometimes my did the song that you were never going to vote for the wholesome ending and that was fine with me because I hadn't written one <laughs> and for about six months that was fine except this guy stood up about six months into the life of the song and he said you don't even have a wholesome ending you're having us vote for something that does not exist you are fraud <laughs> and I was humiliated because he was right so I sat down and I actually wrote a wholesome ending. And every night, I mean, Catherine will tell you, she saw me, I made like a little novena in the back room. Oh Lord, please let this be the one where they vote for the wholesome ending. <laughs> <laughs> and again, my prayers went unanswered. <laughs> but because you're all so nice, and I'm not even sure I remember, but would you like me to try to sing yeah. this one? Yeah. To prove that I actually had one? Okay. Where you go, and Liam shook hands and made a vow. No tattoo, no facelift, no bloody puncture brow. Instead, you gave your money to guide dogs for the blind. <laughs> At the annual gala, you met a blind father and daughter, and you had the grandest time. Yes, you waltzed, you chattered, you merengue. At the end of the night, both Ryoko and Liam were madly in love with the blind father and his daughter. <laughs> After an old fashioned three year. After an old-fashioned nine-year courtship, <laughs> Ryoko and Liam married the blind father and daughter. It was a lovely double wedding, complete with one black and one golden retriever carrying the wedding rings, pinned to embroidered pillows, nestled sweetly inside Irish lace-covered frisbees. They all settled down in a hundred-year-old farmhouse where they raised and trained black and golden retrievers and starred in their very own reality TV show called Puppy Love is Blind. Once a week, they give cha-cha lesson to the rhythmically challenged. And once a night, before they go to bed, they sit in front of the fireplace with their blind sweethearts and they sing. We have a permanent reminder of a temporary bad day when we could not see our natural good looks and almost threw it all away. As we cuddle with our blind sweethearts, they too will attest. golf accident on a cruise ship. <laughs> and you lived on an island like Tom Cruise did for seven years until you were rescued and you came back and found out that you're, no, not 10 years, uh, so after the nine year course, uh, 20 years on the, on the island. <laughs> and you, to find out your wife was now married to a blind guy and, so, and you know, your son was married to a blind girl. So you lived in the closet and nobody ever knew. <laughs> That's the happy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's awesome. <laughs> oh, Lord. 